Good morning, everyone. This is David. Uh, happy to be here and uh, looking forward to the presentation. Let's uh, start with just the outline of what we're going to talk about today. I'll spend a few minutes talking about the context in which we might use this document ASC 41, uh, get to the key idea of what is a performance objective. Uh, we'll take a walk through the document before our first break, and then in the second part, we'll get uh, deep into the technical concepts. Uh, you can see that there's a couple places here where uh, we're going to take questions, so feel free to type those in. I think you have the instructions from Maria on how to do that. Uh, so why don't we get going? I think you can type your questions in at any time, and then when we get to the break, I'll read through them and, and, go and uh, cover them that way. So start with a little bit of background on uh, the standard ASC 4113 and how it relates uh, to building codes and to work with existing buildings. So if you've used ASC 41 before, uh, you might recognize that one thing that's new about it is the title. It now covers two topics, seismic evaluation, uh, which it, in which it replaces the old ASC 3103, and retrofit in which it replaces ASC 4106. So those two standards that we used to have, if you've never used them before, don't worry about this. But if you have used them before, you don't recognize the names. They've now been combined into one standard. Uh, we can talk about why that is if you have questions. But the short answer is it's a good thing. And we now have one book that covers both evaluation uh, and retrofit. The important thing to point out here that is that this is a standard. It is not by itself a code. It can be used with or without the code. But it's written as a standard. And that means uh, it has certain implications for how this is uh, used if you're coming from a code context. So in your location, you probably have adopted the uh, I codes. So you've probably seen the IBC. And what you might not have seen until recently is the IEBC. The adoptions are different in every state and every jurisdiction. But it, there is this other document called the IEBC. It's an I code. It's part of the I codes family. And it relates to the IBC. They, the two documents refer to each other. If in your state you're still using the 2012 IBC and or IEBC, this presentation will still work just fine. But you should know that the 2015 has uh, one or two little changes uh, that we'll, we'll talk about. These are the model codes. Uh, you're probably familiar with uh, your work on new construction that IBC, uh, the, the IBC references ASCE 7 as its background standard for loading and you the code sends you there, you get all the technical stuff is in the standard. In a similar way, the IEBC refers to different standards, and one of the standards it refers to is ASC 4113. So standards are used, the code these days has become kind of a, a holding place where you slot in a bunch of different material standards, uh, and the code then becomes a policy document, and all the technical stuff is kept in the standards. And that's the way the IEBC is developing too. Keep in mind, though, that, again, these are the model codes, and I'll talk about them later on. Uh, but this is not the building code. The building code in your jurisdiction is the adopted version of these model codes. So in California, we now have the 2016 California Building Code and California Existing Building Code. They refer to each other, and they adopt, by reference, the model codes. And then in some jurisdictions, you even have further amendments uh, not just uh, to the model code, but to the state code. For example, a lot of California cities uh, in San Francisco, for example, makes amendments on the state code, which itself amended the model code. So as a standard, uh, ASC 41 does not have a lot of the things that the code has. It doesn't have the administrative provision. It doesn't tell you when you have to do work. It doesn't tell you uh, the performance objective that you have to use. It doesn't tell you which projects you have to do seismic evaluation and retrofit on. Those are policy questions, and those are handled in the building code. At the same time, it's not just a guideline. It is written in what we call code language uh, so that it can be adopted by the code and used in an enforceable way. So it reads like a code, but it's not itself a code. The policy stuff is back in the model code, which references the standard. In short, a standard, I think of a standard as kind of just a very, very thorough definition that's developed by the consensus of a committee. So when you think of a standard, what it means is, well, if the building code says that in a certain condition, a building has to be made safe for earthquakes, 
Now we need to understand what we mean by the word safe. So it allows the, allows the building code to set general policy. And then through a standard, we have a very long and complicated, in this case, about 500 pages of stuff telling us what it means when we get together and say, as an industry, that a building is safe, for example. So that's what I think of as a standard. It's referenced by the code. When then do you get into using this standard? At what point do you open up ASC 4113? Well, it's going to depend on what I call the context in which you're doing seismic work. 